Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. These beautiful ayat that we have listened to are the same surah and the same Prophet whose to dua we review tonight. Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam makes a dua in the surah that bears his name, Surah Yusuf, the 12th surah of the Holy Quran, verse number 33. And in the verse before it, the wife of Al Aziz, the master of his house, uh, who is in a position of absolute worldly authority over him. Uh, he, because he is in slavery in a society that does not protect his rights as a person from outside the lens of Egypt. And she says, That this is the man that you blame me concerning. I sought to seduce him and yet he was firm. And if he does not do what I command, then he will be cast into jail and he will be from those that are debased. So here, our Prophet Yusuf السلام, given this heavy test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is invited by the environment around him to haram. And what makes this test incredibly diff difficult is that there is every worldly excuse. Consider that he is young in age, that he is a slave, he's not a free man, that he is a foreigner in this land, that he is in a society where he has no legal recourse, no rights that are protected, that he is away from his family, and you see some people that are lesser than this great prophet, they go on spring break or they go away from their family just to do haram because they don't have that, that supporting structure at home. And there's all this pressure around him that might lead a lesser man to do the wrong thing. And he makes this incredible dua that we have to internalize and teach our children. قَالَ رَبِّ السِّجِنُ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا يَدْعُونَنِي إِلَيَّ He said, O oh my Lord, Prison is more beloved to me than that which they invite me to. And yet from his great humility, he did not see that this, firm, this firmness, this steadfastness, this thabat, was from his own ability or capacity. He associated it with the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so from his humility, he said, وَإِلَّا تَصْرِفْ عَنِّي كَيْدَهُنَّ أَصْبُ إِلَيْهِنْ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ and if you do not protect me, O oh Allah, from their plot and their invitation, I may feel inclined towards them, and I would then be among the ignorant. And we've learned this in the dua of the prophets in the series, Ad'iyatul Anbiya, that when they approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they approach Allah by His might and their weakness, by His richness and power and exaltedness and their limitation. So Yusuf alayhi salam attributes this great accomplishment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, not to his abilities. And that's why there's a beautiful thing in Surah Yusuf that you may not catch in the language. In the page before, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَذَلِكَ لِنَصْرِفَ عَنْهُ السُّوءَ وَالْفَحْشَةَ In other than the Qur'an, if it were to say, كَذَلِكَ لِنَصْرِفَهُ عَنِ السُّوءِ وَالْفَحْشَةَ in other than the Qur'an, this would mean that the person is approaching haram and Allah is moving them away. But the language here means that Yusuf alayhi salam is firm on his principles, unmoving, and the haram is trying to knock at the gates. And the powerful language of the Qur'an, it's as if the Allah Azza wa Jal causes this sin, this transgression to be turned away. This is repeated multiple times. On the preceding page, here in this dua, he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to move away the haram. And in the answer to the dua, in the following uh, ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal answers this dua and indeed says that he moves away the haram and the sin and the transgression. My brothers and sisters, from the fruits of Iman, as the Prophet ﷺ mentions in the hadith, that none of us truly believes until our hawa, our desires, 
are compliant to the revelation that has come to the Prophet ﷺ. Meaning that the peak of Iman is that I love the halal and I detest the haram and it's easy. The early steps towards Iman are not like this. It can be a struggle. It can be difficult. A person can feel inclined towards haram and have to struggle. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى As for the person that fears the maqam, the great station of their Lord, and forbids themselves from its base desires, then Jannah is the final abode. But the attainment of rushd and the higher levels of Iman, the struggle goes away. And it starts to be easy to do the right thing. The nafs becomes so used to obeying Allah that it stops rebelling. It stops inviting so much to haram. It becomes easier to stand in prayer, easier to give charity, easier to give to our families. And whomever does not taste this sweetness should not be discouraged. Because in reality, surely none of us taste the full level of this sweetness. But we're only a struggle away, inshaAllah from continuing to strive on the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hoping in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's tawfiq to keep sin and transgression and haram away from us and our children and to make the halal and ta' and ibadah all more and more beloved to our hearts as he made it to Prophet Yusuf. Allahumma ameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.